Hi guys, welcome to Engineer Math Channel. In this video, I will teach you integration by parts using DI method. So if you wanna learn more about this, just keep on watching. Okay, so how do we use integration by parts using DI method? So DI stands for Derivative Integral Method. So, let me show you an example. If we have the integral of e raised to ax cosine bx dx. So, we will need to identify the term or expression in the integrand that we need to differentiate and integrate. So, we can either use this to ex or cosine bx for the function to be differentiated or integrated. But we usually use the function that can be integrated easily. So in any of the case, e raised to ax and cosine bx can be integrated easily. So it's up to us to choose. So let me choose cosine bx for the expression to be integrated. And then for the function to be differentiated, we are left with e raised to ax. Now, we must also put the sign for each row that will be alternating sign, plus, minus, plus, and so on. If we ever need to uh, extend the rows, depending on how many times we will differentiate and integrate. So, let's try to differentiate first e raised to ax. So, if we apply the chain rule, the derivative of e raised to ax is e raised to ax times the derivative of ax which is simply a and then differentiating again this a e raised to ax so we have e raised to ax times the derivative of ax is a so we have a times a or that will be a squared right now for the integral of uh, cosine bx so if we apply u substitution we can let u be equal to bx and then uh, du is equal to b dx. So we divide both sides by b. Therefore, we can have 1 over b times the integral of cosine. That's positive sine. Then just copy the bx. Again, integrating this time 1 over b sine bx. So that will become 1 over b. Another 1 over b for the u substitution of bx so that will be 1 over b squared but the integral now of sine that will be negative cosine then copy the bx so we have negative 1 over b squared cosine bx and then i stop integrating and differentiating on this row because i notice that if you multiply this e raised to ax times cosine bx, it will be the same to the original integrand e raised to ax cosine bx. So that's one case when you will need to stop uh, differentiating and integrating each of the functions in the di column. Okay. The next step is we need to multiply diagonally these terms. If we now try to evaluate, we have integral of e raised to ax cosine bx dx so multiply positive e raised to ax times 1 over b sine bx so that's just 1 over b e raised to ax sine bx likewise here so let's multiply negative a e raised to ax times negative 1 over b squared cos bx so that will become positive to negative equals positive sine then a over b squared e raised to ax cosine bx and then for this uh, third row we need to evaluate the integral of the product of these two terms so we have positive times negative so that will be negative integral of the product of this one and this one that's a squared e raised to ax times 1 over b squared cosine bx dx and a squared and b squared are just constant so you can have that beside the integral so that's negative a squared over b squared 
integral of e raised to ax cosine dx dx. Okay, let me delete this now. So, you notice that we have the same integral of e raised to ax cosine bx, the original one, and the produced integral on the right side. So, I can combine them by transposing this integral to the left side. So, I will have integral of e raised to ax cosine bx dx. So, negative a squared b squared, that will be positive a squared over b squared when you transpose to the left side. Integral of e raised to ax cosine bx dx. And then, it's just equal to this expression. So, I'll be copying that here on the right side. And then, if you combine this, so... This one has uh, an invisible coefficient of 1. So, if you add 1 plus a squared over b squared as a single fraction, so that will be b squared plus a squared over b squared. Then, copy the same integral of a raised to ax cosine bx dx. Again, equal to this expression on the right side. Okay, but I want to solve this integral of e raised to ax cosine bx dx with just a coefficient of 1. So, I will eliminate this by dividing both sides by b squared plus a squared over b squared. So, you will cancel this. You can have the integral of e raised to ax cosine bx dx, which is what we need to find. But we need to simplify this expression on the right side. So, we can get the reciprocal of this one. So, that's b squared over b squared plus a squared. All multiplied by the right side. Okay, this one. And we can actually distribute this. Or what I can do is... I will factor out this e raised to ax and what I will just distribute is this b squared to every term. So if I do that, I will have e raised to ax over b squared plus a squared times, so distributing b squared, so b squared times 1 over b e raised to ax sine bx plus distribute here b squared times a over b squared e raised to ax cosine bx. So, I can have e raised to ax over b squared plus a squared times quantities. So, I have b squared times 1 over b. Cancel this b. I will have b e raised to ax sine b x plus b squared times a over b squared. Canceling b squared, I will have a e raised to ax cosine bx. Then don't forget the plus c when you are integrating an indefinite integral. So therefore, the final answer is this one. Next, how about the integral of e raised to ax sine bx dx? Again, we can use integration by part using the i method. So I will choose the expression or function to be differentiated the same as e raised to ax and the one that we will integrate is sine px. So let me put the alternating sign in front. So plus minus plus and then uh, let's try to differentiate e raised to ax so same as before. So the first uh, de derivative of e raised to ax is a e raised to ax. The second one is a squared e raised to ax. For the integral of sine bx, again, applying your substitution, I will have 1 over b for uh, u substitution of bx. Then times the integral of sine, that's negative cosine. Then copy the same expression inside the cosine, which is bx. So that's just equal to negative cosine of bx. Then, integrating further, this negative 1 over b cosine bx. So, we will have negative 1 over b 
times 1 over b for the u substitution. So this will become negative 1 over b squared. Then integrating cosine, that's positive sine, right? Copy the same expression inside the sine bx. Now when we multiply the third row, particularly the function e raised to ax and sine bx, it's the same as the original expression in the integral e raised to ax sine bx. So we can stop differentiating and integrating now. Okay, so therefore if we evaluate the integral of e raised to ax sine bx dx, so we will multiply diagonally these terms. So we have positive e raised to ax times negative 1 over b cosine bx, so that's just negative 1 over b e raised to ax cosine bx. Then, for this one, negative a e raised to ax times negative 1 over b squared sine bx, so that will become positive, right? Negative times negative is positive. Then we have a over b squared e raised to ax sine bx. Then we will need to integrate the product of this row. So we have positive times negative. So that will be negative. Integral of a squared e raised to ax times 1 over b squared sine bx dx. So a squared over b squared is constant. You can just put it in front of the integral. That will be negative a squared over b squared integral of e raised to x sine bx dx. So let me delete this, replace by this simplified version. Now, since we have the same integral on the left side, the original one, e raised to ax sine bx, and the produced integral on the right, integral of e raised to ax sine bx, likewise, I can transpose this term to the left side so that I can combine them. So I will have integral of e raised to x sine bx dx. So negative a squared over b squared when it transpose to the left side that will become positive a squared over b squared. Then the integral of e raised to ax sine bx dx. Equal to the right side. So I will just copy this expression. Okay. Then combining this as a single integral, so this one has an invisible coefficient of 1. If you add 1 plus e squared over b squared, so combine as a single fraction, that's b squared plus a squared over b squared. Integral of this one, e raised to ax sine bx dx. Then all equal to the expression on the right side. Okay, let me just copy. Okay, so what I need to evaluate is just this expression. I want to eliminate this coefficient. So I can divide both sides by b squared plus a squared over b squared. So I will cancel this out. I will be left on the left side with the uh, integral of e raised to ax sine bx dx which is what we need to find and simplifying this right side so i can uh, multiply the reciprocal of this one by this expression so i will have b squared over b squared plus a squared all multiplied by this expression so what I can do is, I can distribute this to every term, but what I will distribute is just this b squared, and I will factor out this e raised to ax here. So I will have e raised to ax over b squared plus a squared times, so let's, let's distribute this b squared. So b squared times negative 1 over b cosine bx. Distribute also b squared on this term. We have plus b squared times a over b squared sine bx. So e raised to ax over b squared plus a squared. 
So, B squared times negative 1 over B cancel this B. We will have negative B cosine BX plus B squared times A over B squared. So, cancel the B squared. We will have A sine BX. Then, don't forget to put plus C since we have indefinite integral. Or you can arrange this as e raised to ax over b squared plus a squared. By commutative property, I will write first a sine bx followed by negative b cosine bx plus c. So this is the final answer. Okay, so I think that's it for this video, integration by parts using the I method. So I hope you learned something from this video and thank you for watching.